Someone told me this story late at night, in a bar, in a city not far from the southern border. I needed a break, so I listened. Casey used to sleepwalk when she was a little girl. Until she was thirteen, it became a common vision in her house to see her walking in the middle of the night, looking out for something in weird places around the house. A CD, a video game, a picture, inside the oven, in the fireplace, in Dad's gun cabinet. Something, somewhere. Her mom used to tell her that, in case of getting awake in an unknown place, she should just remain calm, try to look for an adult, and ask for help to call home. Poor Casey. For a couple of years, she used to sleep fully clothed. Those episodes stopped once she started her teens. She forgot about it and went on to live like a normal teenager. However, about two months ago, Casey, now in her early thirties and walking away from a bitter marriage, moved into a small apartment downtown. And everything started all over again. But it was worse. Way worse. She was, once again, walking asleep around the apartment, and once again looking for something. Now she was waking up in the moment a knife was cutting her hand while she was looking for that something inside the oven. She woke up when the fire in the fireplace burned her hand. She woke up holding that gun her father gave her, just in case you-know-who decides to pay a visit. Casey did everything in her hands to try to find a cure, to fix the problem, because, of course, for her, all these episodes were just another broken thing that had to be fixed. The saddest part, probably, was that if Casey did not trust herself with a gun, she trusted herself even less without one. And all she heard from a therapist was just empty words. That it was a normal reaction after the divorce. Anxiety, maybe. A lot of stress. That she had to take one step at a time. Accept her past. Look for a bright future. Nothing of which was helping her. She needed a solution, and she needed it immediately. And so the journey began. During her marriage, she had met some peculiar individuals, to say the least. After sharing her problems with one of these friends, she was taken to visit people all around the city with hopes of finding something that would finally help her. Under a dark bridge, in the parking lot of a hospital, away and hidden from most eyes. Until she found something. The promised land for those who run and live in their dreams. Or something like that. It worked. The first week, Casey managed to put her life together again. The last night of that first week, she met some friends at a restaurant. Later, they said that she had talked about how her life recently improved after taking some meds. Meds that, sadly, were out of the market, but that she could manage to get. Everything was perfect. The next we know about this story came from her neighbor, a night owl who never complained about a thing, and certainly not about the noises in Casey's apartment. He explained that he liked to hear her through the walls, walking and running and panting and groaning and snarling. Sometimes he thought she was punching the floor. Sometimes it was like she was jumping on her bed. Sometimes it sounded like if she was hitting the ceiling fan. Apparently, his nights became a little less interesting that one week she got better. But not that night. The noises were so loud that he decided to leave his apartment and go for a drink at 2 a.m. When he went back, everything was finally silence. The next morning, he woke up to find the cops in the corridor. He asked them what was happening. Casey was found naked and dead in her apartment, hanging from the fan. She used a belt. Her family concluded that she committed suicide while sleepwalking. But some people think that there is more about this story and its abrupt end. <laughs>